Hello everyone. As we are entering the season, uh, I want to speak about Hanukkah, the Feast of Hanukkah. And um, I want to show you some things that uh, you maybe have not seen elsewhere. I want to show how this feast um, points or gives us clues about the timeline um, of the events during the tribulation period. And if we, if we see this timeline, we can understand when the tribulation period begins. And knowing that the rapture happens before that, it gives us also a clue about this. Um, this is not new information uh, on this channel, but I know that many uh, will not go back uh, in previous years to find out and in previous videos. It's not necessarily uh, that I showed this um, regarding the feast, but also when we studied the book of Revelation. Um, anyway, I want to do this in two parts. The first part telling something about the background, the history of uh, Hanukkah, whether it's, it's biblical to begin with. And uh, the second part, um, we will get to, uh, to the bone of it uh, by uh, looking at this timeline, how this, is, um, how this can be derived and what clue Hanukkah gives us in, in particular. Um, and I want to do this all from the Bible. Uh, and um, I say this because uh, that's what we ought to do, to study the Word of God. And um, to be like like those uh, those wise men that uh, that visited Jesus, they were studying the scriptures, they were studying the prophecies, and they were uh, observing the signs. And that is what we should do as well. Um, uh, that doesn't mean that we uh, have it right all the time, but it means that we are we are looking, and we are not just looking because we have to or because uh, it's interesting, but. Uh, because we have this anticipation, we look forward to our home calling um, with great anticipation. And so we want to know how near are we. And we can know. God has given us many clues. So, um, Hanukkah. Let's talk about that. The word Hanukkah. Uh, ha no. Ka? It's written like this in Hebrew, Hanukkah, and um, it means, it's, it's a regular Hebrew word, it means dedication. And that's what it's about. It's about the dedication and the rededication of the temple. It is the eighth feast. Uh, eight is a massive keyword in this, uh, in this uh, context. Uh, I spoke about this in other videos regarding Hanukkah. By the way, uh, on the YouTube channel there is a playlist called Feasts, uh, and there you will find uh, videos about this. Uh, or on the website you can um, go to the video section and select uh, category Feasts, uh, or Feasts actually, and then you can uh, type any keyword and uh, you will find all this information. Eight. It's eight feasts. In addition to the seven feasts that are given in Leviticus 23. And because it's not in Leviticus 23, some say, well, it's not a biblical feast. It's just a Jewish uh, tradition. But uh, we will see that that is not uh, exactly the case. The feast lasts also eight days. And um, this calendar that you can also uh, download um, from the website, and there are many more... Um, handouts and charts uh, that you can uh, get there which are just good resources uh, for your Bible study. You can print this on a bit smaller uh, format and keep it in your Bible. The version on the website has uh, also uh, the feasts mentioned on this um, and you will find there uh, the feast of um, Hanukkah uh, in the ninth month um, and uh, it mentions uh, some other details about that. It lasts eight days. It's the eighth feast. As I said, eight is a key number in this feast. And it finds its origin in the period between the Old and the New Testament, during the Greek occupation. And um, there was uh, in uh, 165 before Christ an uprising uh, led by uh, Judah Matityahu, also known as the Maccabee. Maccabee meaning hammer, the hammer. 
and he drove the Syrian Greeks from Israel. The temple was liberated, but the temple had been greatly desecrated, and so it needed to be consecrated again, to be rededicated. And that's what this is all about. Um, it happened on the 25th, eve of the 24th, into the 25th of the ninth month. Um, and um, the menorah was lit. So the menorah in the temple was lit. And um, as you uh, can read in the, in the Torah, the menorah had to be uh, um, burning for um, um, continuously. Eh? Had to be burning continuously. And, but that needed oil. And there was only enough oil for one day. So there was a problem. Um, and it took about a week to produce new oil. So um, that is where the miracle happened. With this little oil that was only enough for one day, the menorah kept uh, burning eight straight days. And after that, of course, they had enough uh, oil to, uh, to refill the, lamp, the lamps. So... Um, this is how the feast came into existence. It was linked to this dedication, or rededication rather, of the temple, and this miracle, um, which is not recorded in the Bible, I say that, uh, um, but this miracle of uh, this um, menorah burning for eight straight days on this little oil. Um, so this is why the, the feast Chanukah, was declared, the f and it's often called the Festival of Lights because of that. And light is another thing that is very important keyword in this feast. And uh, I show in other videos how this is actually linked to many of the symbols that we uh, find in Christmas. I mean, I know there's a lot of negativity about Christmas, and, and we've spoken also about that in other videos uh, regarding Saturnalia and all these things. But um, we should see it as an opportunity and also see. Uh, how we can use these elements uh, to actually spread the gospel, to evangelize. Um, okay, so what they did also to commemorate this during the feast of uh, Hanukkah, uh, they will not use the standard menorah uh, with the six arms, but they will have one with eight arms, so uh, on each side an arm added, so that it has a total of nine lights, uh, the, the shamash, the server, servant, with eight lights, of which one is lit each day. The middle, the center light is lit in the beginning, and th from this light the others are lit one day, ev every day um, one light. Um, that is the, the idea. Um, the central light is called shamash. Shamash means servant. And um, it is actually a type of Christ, the light of the world. Um, and he passes this light on to his disciples. Uh, this is what we see um, that Jesus in, in the Old Testament, um, by Isaiah, he's called the light to the Gentiles, light to the world. We find this again in the New Testament, but then in um, the Sermon on the Mount where uh, Jesus says, uh, you are the light of the world. Your light has to shine. So he is passing on this light to us. And that is the whole idea that we see there. Of course, this is not the idea in the Jewish mind, but we can recognize these types uh, as Christians, and we should. Now, curiously, observing Jews recite a phrase when they light a light, so every day of these eight days during the feast, they light one more light. So at the end of the, uh, the eight days, all these lights are, are lit. And, and they say something. They say the phrase, we, uh, we light throughout the eight days of Hanukkah. And then for every day, they have also a blessing following that. But this, this particular phrase is a very interesting um, phrase. Uh, if we look at it uh, in the Hebrew, so in the Hebrew it is Madlikin Shemona Yemei Hanukkah. And um, so if you write that, uh, it's Madlikin. Uh, 
מדליקים uh, שמי and then ימי, uh, יוד, מם יוד, חנוכה. Okay. So it's four words, and um, if we look at these, the first letters of these four, uh, four words, so that's the mem, shin, yod, and the chi, uh, and we, we write them, this is the acrostic meaning, uh, which is not strange, uh, this happens all the time in the Bible, and in, in, in Hebraic and uh, other ancient prof um, uh, poetry, this is used a lot, acrostic meanings. Um, we've spoken also about this in other videos. Um, for example, um, Psalm 119 uses acrostics, but many other psalms and, and uh, scriptures. So if you read these first uh, letters, um, what do you find? The word Masiach. So every day of these eight days, as the the observing Jews light the candle, they say this this phrase Madlikin Shemona Yimei Hanukkah, and unknowingly and unwillingly, they actually um, point with that to the Messiah. And all of this feast, and I've, I've talked about this extensively, all of this feast points to the Messiah, to Yeshua. And they, while they say this, they, they take the light from the central light, the shamash, the, the servant. And so it shows also that the Messiah, Jesus, comes as a servant to give his light to all of us. And um, that, uh, it's, that's ironic, actually, that the Jewish people use this because in their mindset... Um, the Messiah is not a servant, he is a victor and he will uh, liberate and redeem um, Israel. So uh, it goes against their, uh, their own belief system, um, but yeah, we know there is um, spiritually a veil on their, uh, their eyes. Now the story of Hanukkah can be found in the Deuterocanonical book, uh, 2 Maccabees chapter 10, so if you have access to that, um, it's interesting to read it. But okay, it's not in the canon, so I don't want to, to uh, pay too much attention to that uh, here and now. We find it also in the Bible. Um, Second Maccabees tells us that the redemption, the, the red rededication happened on the same day as the original dedication of the same temple. So this was the second temple, obviously. Uh, so it was rededicated on the same day as on, on which it was dedicated. And uh, that, that date of dedication can be found in the Bible. Uh, in uh, Haggai um, chapter 2, Haggai chapter 2 and verse 18, and there it says, Consider now from this day and upward from the four and twentieth day of the ninth month, even from the day that the foundation of the Lord's temple was laid. Consider it. The 24th um, of the ninth month. And this is the day uh, that Hanukkah begins. The, the uh, eve of that day going into the 25th. So 24th, 25th uh, of the ninth month. And uh, then we find mention of the feast in the New Testament. And this is important. Um, and uh, of course, uh, yeah, unfortunately, often missed. Uh, but it's in uh, John uh, chapter 10, in verses 22, 23. There it says, uh, And it was at Jerusalem the feast of the dedication. And it was winter. And Jesus walked in the temple in Solomon's porch. So it was winter, actually. Uh, Bible scholars have figured out that that particular day was December 19th. The, that's the period that it's called in, uh, also in Israel. Uh, it was winter, um, and it was, it says, uh, the feast of the dedication. The feast of the dedication simply is Hanukkah. That's the Hebrew word for dedication. 
one and one translation, nothing mystical about that. So that's the feast, and at that point Jesus was walking in the temple, uh, which means he was uh, honoring or remembering that feast. It was a known feast in Jesus' time already. It's not something that rabbis made up later, that is a particular um, something of the Jewish religion. It, it has a um, biblical foundation. Now the date, and that is interesting, if you uh, look at the calendar, and again, if you, if you download this, I will leave a link, you will see a uh, mention of it uh, next to it. In the ninth month, uh, on the 25th, you will see that that is um, exactly 75 uh, days after um, Yom Kippur. And this is very important. Keep this number 75 in your hip pocket because I come back to this later. This provides us with a very important clue. So 75 days after Yom Kippur we find the feast of Hanukkah. Um, and, and there is also there a pattern. If you look at the, the spring feast you find um, uh, Pesach and then uh, unleavened bread and first fruits close to each other, actually overlapping each other. Then there is a gap of 50 days and then you have uh, Pentecost, Shavuot. And you see actually the same in the fall. You have uh, Yom Teruah or Rosh Hashanah as many know it, but it's Yom Teruah. Um, then you have Yom Kippur and then you have tabernacles close to each other. And then there is this gap of 75 days leading to Hanukkah. So it is sort of uh, uh, mirroring or pa paralleling each other. So the 75 days is an important thing. This is the introduction of, of Hanukkah. You want to know more, again, go to the website uh, or to the uh, YouTube channel uh, playlist feasts and you can find a lot more. Uh, and now uh, in the second part, um, I will show you how uh, this gives us a clue regarding the timeline of the events in the tribulation period. Uh, so I see you in the second part. Mm -hmm.